Turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10. Ecclesiastes, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, chapter 10. Just lift one verse, but keep your Bible open, just verse 1. Thank you, Lord. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savour. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honour. Let's read it again. Dead flies cause the, the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savour. So doth a little folly that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. We are in part two of our title last week was Little Foxes. Let us take the little foxes, the foxes, the little foxes that spoil a vine for our, our, our vines of tender grapes. And we, we're not going to go there again, but we looked at the little foxes and all that it, really that the Lord had shown us from that. So this morning we're going to look at dead flies. <laughs> it's not very appetizing, is it? Not very good. To look at dead flies. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savour. Reminds me of the, the jokes, waiter, waiter, there's a fly in my soup. And you see, would you eat your soup if there was a big fly lying dead on it? Would you drink your drink if you were on holidays and the waiter brought it over and there's a big floating fly in it? Causes it to stink. It causes it to put you, put you off it. No one wants to touch it. And all it is is a little fly. Already it puts a mindset upon you and into you that you don't want to touch it. That you don't want to take it. Why? Because it speaks of germs and speaks of disease. It speaks of dirty things, if you want. And dead flies that have fallen into the ointment of the, ap the apothecary. Wish they'd change that word. <laughs> Here we have the, the dead flies, they cause it to stink. They cause it to go rotten. It says it sends forth a stinking savour or, or a, 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 a smell or it sends forth a stinking odour whenever the flies are dead and in it. It's strange because how long does it take someone to build up a witness of Christ in their life? How long does it take you and I, to build up a testimony. You see, when you first get saved, and especially if you came from a background like me, people say he's up to something. What's he up to now? Or he's trying to get out of maybe a prison sentence or something. <laughs> or he's trying to get off light in court or something like that. He must be in some sort of trouble. He's trying to find some sort of ease with the police and I'm a Christian now and things have sort of, you know, I've sort of worked my way around it. But really, if you're someone like me, people think that. And how long does it take before you build up a witness and a testimony? It takes time. It takes time. And it's whether a Someone has even in a, in a marriage, there's been adultery committed and the forgiving partner forgives them. It takes time for trust to come back. It takes time for that to be worked at and trust to come back. And so it's a matter of, even as we heard this morning in the spirit, it's not running ahead. It's not something that we can just click our fingers and everything, if you want, just Turns a right around at that moment, but God works in these things like the potter has the clay and the wheel. Here we have that if you have a testimony and a witness, it takes a time for it to be built, especially before men. Especially before men. Now, as soon as you get saved, you're saved. As soon as you're forgiven under the blood of Christ, you're forgiven. Positionally, you are righteous in him. Because why? Because his righteousness is on you. You're already righteous in his eyes, but in the world's eyes. Your lifestyle matters, brothers and sisters. 
Brother, see how you treat your wife, it matters. Sister, see how you treat your husband, it matters. See how you speak when you're out, it matters. See where you go and your life takes you, it matters. It really matters. And many of us, we allow dead flies to cause it to stink. Just the little things. Just the little things causes it to stink. But how long does it take to build a witness and testimony of saving grace in our lives, producing a changed life where people then say, you know, that guy is truly saved. And I remember that many a time that people would have said, even the first week, the first month, the first few months, what is going on with this fella? I remember some of my old mates, they would have said to me, uh, one of them turned around and one time was walking along the road and as I was walking along, some of them were outside a pub and had my Bible under my arm and I walked over to talk to them. They're all standing outside having a smoke. And the sun was shining and I was coming out of church and they're all standing drinking. And I went to and says, well, lads, you're all right. And uh, they all look at me as if, hey, who's this guy? Hey, who's this guy? And one of them pulls up in the car beside me and he winds down the window. He goes, Karen, and I turned around and he mustn't have seen the Bible. And he says, uh, he says, uh, are you normal yet? I says, what? Are you normal yet? I says, if you mean I'm, I'm still going on with God, I'm going on with God. He says, no, you're still in the God squad. That's what he called to, said to me. And I says, I am. Building up a testimony, yet his brother came to me, and he wasn't trying to be ignorant. He was just happy to see me. He thought I was back with the boys. That's what they want, you see. That's what the devil wants. That's what dead flies bring you to. Dead lifestyle, dead witness, dead testimony. No spirit in the life. No mentioning of the blood. No, you know, you're not walking and living a life with the ungodly will cause you to stink before men and stink before God. Hello? Isn't that right? Dead flies cause the ointment to stink. The ointment is the anointing. It's no good us here and we're praising God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, we're, we're, when the, you know, whenever we're in a time of revival and praise and worship here and the Spirit's moving, and we go outside and live like a devil. Or even just the little things, we spend more time with the ungodly than with the believer. We spend our time doing things that are dead, like dead flies, causing the ointment to stink. You know what it does? It holds back. It mars the anointing in the life. It mars the anointing of what God has in store for you. God wants us to be clean vessels. Clean vessels. And here the ointment or the anointing of the Spirit. Oh, we're so conscious, but when we go home, when we come a Saturday night, sure you'll, nobody knows if we go somewhere way far and we sit in the pub all night. God knows. Or if we're dancing around our handbags but only had two drinks. <laughs> Dear, help you if that's the height of your excitement. <laughs> and we come on a Sunday morning and we're praising God. There's another spirit in us rather than the Holy Ghost. Dead flies cause us to stink before God and it causes your testimony to stink before man. Here we have dead flies that cause the stink. And how long does it take to build a witness up, yet how quickly it is lost? How quickly it is lost? One dead fly causes the ointment to stink. Now, we're not talking about saved salvation by works. I'm talking to the saved this morning. You're saved. Sometimes your witness stinks. I'm not trying to be condemning either. I'm trying to encourage you. I'm trying to get you to go on. Our witness and our testimony is easily damaged and tarnished and lost in the sight of men because of one little sin or one little mistake. And even though God will forgive you, I want to make that clear. 
God loves you and he will forgive you when you turn and repent of it. I want to make that clear. But the ointment may stink. The anointing will not be the same in the life. The blessing won't be the same. It is likened to the stench or the stink of dead flies. You see, the perfumer, he gets the elements that's needed and he compounds them down and he puts them together to make the, 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 the ointment which gives forth the savor or the smell that he wants for that particular perfume. And our great perfumer, if you want, he takes the compound elements that he decides for your life and he puts it together and when he works you into a fitly framed vessel for him, this is what happens. He starts to anoint you. He brings you through, but he starts to anoint you. And he anoints you. And sometimes, listen, I'm talking about me, all of us. Sometimes we are so conscious of his anointing we could either fall on our face and cry for mercy or we could fall on our knees and fall in love with him all over again. But other times we, fight, we sense him so near we could be like David. He, we can run through a troop and by my God if I leaped over a wall. He says that's how we feel. That's how we think. That's what happens in the anointing. But here's what happens. One dead fly causes it to stink. Now, the anointing is abiding in you. But what I mean is, is when God releases the perfume of it. Every one of you have the anointing. It's come to the cross and has the spirit. God wants to release the perfume. But he won't release the perfume while there's dead flies in the ointment. You know why? Because he doesn't want you and I to stink before the world. He doesn't want us to stink. He gets the compounds and the elements, the ingredients together. But the dead flies change the fragrance to a stinking savor. Now, unfortunately, and to be honest, we all stink at times. Let's be honest. We all do. Instead of being a sweet-smelling savor unto the Lord, a beautiful fragrance... We must remember that small things have big consequences. Small things have big consequences. Even the appearance of evil. The appearance of it. The appearance of you sitting with the ungodly and their mouths are like sewer pipes. The appearance of you walking into a wine lodge to get a bottle of wine. Hello? You're not sure, are you? Amen? Amen. I was poor. Amen. Church? Amen. 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 Here we have one old uh, Puritan said this. He says, one sinner destroyeth much good. One person in a church assembly can bring so much harm, like a dead fly in the ointment. One person. One sin in the life destroys much good that God's doing in your life. It just takes a one. In the Song of Solomon, remember we mentioned it last week. And if you want, you can turn just over the page to it. It's only across to Song of Solomon chapter 1. Listen to the beauty of this song. Remember we look at the divine. He's the, he, he is the, the real true vine. But here we have the king and the bride singing a love song to one another. And it's, they're singing, let, not the little, let us take the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine. Well, listen to the song again in chapter 1, verse 1. The song of song which is Solomon's. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For thy love is better than... What is it? Oh, come on. Thy love is better than? Wine. So you know when someone says, you know, I just, I just love to take a wee drink. You know what? I just love to worship him. It's him. His love in my life is greater than my need for the alcohol I had. His love in my life was greater than the drug addiction I had. 
It's his love, the Calvary love, the precious blood of Christ. It's the kisses of the Holy Ghost that causes me to live right for him. So I can go and do that. I can. I can go and you can go and do that. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. We can do it. But because we love Jesus and we know his love for us, we say, Lord, you're greater than it all. I don't need it. I don't need it. Because I've got the greatest wine. The wine of his love. Look at verse 3. Because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. In other words, here what, the, what is being sung here is because of the savor of thy good ointments. Can I ask you something, brother, sister? In all honesty, in your own heart. I know we're all, none of us are perfect. I know that, but in all honesty, the witness you've been shown recently, is it a good ointment? How you speak and work? How you speak at home? How you react around situations? Do you fly off the handle and like bold Peter curse and swear I know him not? What's the ointment like? Are we good ointments? For thy name, he says, the name of the, the Lord. Thy name, and the word name is shame, that means thy fame, your fame, Lord. Thy reputation, your reputation, Lord. Your glory, Lord. Notice he says, because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy fame, thy name, thy reputation. You see, everyone looks at you. Everyone looks at me and they know my name. They know your name and they say, oh, there's Ken who got saved 20-something years ago and they're, 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 at least he's went on with God. Yes, and I've failed many times. And there's been many dead flies. And there's been quite a number of little foxes. But thank God, I don't know if we'll get to it this morning or not, I give him the hands of little fish. <laughs> And he blesses it. Give him the little fish. It's what you have. The little boy comes with the small fish. And, and he hands him a small loaf. And that which he places into the master's hand. The master blesses and others are blessed in, in the stead. He, here we see that when we look at this about the, the name of If I had a pound for everybody who hated me, <laughs> honestly, I'd, I'd do all right, like, you know. I'd do okay. But I can tell you what, the wine of their pounds is nothing to the love of Christ. <laughs> and the releasing of the perfumed anointment that he has for in our lives. You see, we're not looking, as it were, to please men, but to please God. But our witness before men, maintain your integrity for Christ, brother. Maintain your integrity for Christ, sister. Notice, you see, the name of, uh, represents who that person is. When people think of your name. Now, we know that people will think evil or ill. That's okay. Listen. But when we know that what we have done or what we, how we have lived our lives before God, that's all you need to know. Keep walking on with God. Keep yourself sweet. Keep your heart pure. Don't let a root of bitterness take you because it just it's like dead flies. Causes you to stink. Listen, you could have a better heart, and everybody you meet, you pour out your better heart to them about this, that, and the other. When what, what, what happens? You become stinking. But see, when you just keep yourself sweet before God, God blesses it. That's what to do. Here we have the dead flies. Now, the word for flies here, it's a, it's a word, zivuv. Zivuv. And it means to flit. You know a fly we flit. He fly and you're trying to slap it. Get out of the yard of the road and so forth. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what it means. But it comes from the word 
Belzebub or Belzebub. So the word fly, zebub or zebub, is where we get the word Belzebub, the name of the devil. It also means, the devil means, or Belzebub means Lord of the Flies. But you know what its root word means? And I'm not trying to be crass, and I'm not trying to be crude. So please, when I'm talking about this, don't think I'm saying this to try and be, uh, to, to try and get a, 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 a reaction in this way. It means Lord of the Dung. Now, and that's why I'm saying this. Look, we know where we find flies, don't we? On the Dung. On the dung. And the dung heap of things that are out there, those flies attach themselves to us, and when we allow them, they die and they cause a stinking savor. It's from the devil. It's from the devil. The word here for dead flies, it means plural, but it also gives the idea of singular in the original text. So one fly. You know, waiter, waiter, there's a fly in my soup. That's the joke. And there's one and I'm not taking it. And one fly, it's strange because people tend to have short memories. They tend to forget the times when you were with them when their loved ones were sick and you ministered to their family. I'm not talking about them, just me, I'm talking about all of us. You tend to forget when you sat there when their children weren't doing well in hospital. They tend to forget when you were up at night praying with them or on the telephone with them. And you've poured your heart out to them and you've brought them gifts or you've been there for them or you've made them food or you've done whatever and they tend to forget. You see, at the time, you're the, you're the hero. You're the big white sheet, you know, pure. One little fly that's made a spot on the sheet. One little wrong move. Notice what it says in Ecclesiastes 10 and 1, dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. In other words, see if you're not perfect. Before men and before women, they will take the minutest thing that you have said that has been folly or foolish or just stupid. Maybe you haven't meant it even. And they will see nothing but the dead fly in your soup. And they'll hate you for it. They will hate you for it. I'm sure we've all been there. The idea here is people easily forget that this is the man, the woman with the wisdom, knowledge. They're so great a help, but see the one time you can't. It's like the time, it's the story of the man, and he stops speaking to his friend for, of many years. So he goes to his friend and he says, Friend, why have you stopped speaking to me? Was I not there when your father passed away and comforted you? Yes, you were. And was I not there when your, your wife was having your children and you were concerned if the birth was going right? Yes, you were. And was I not at the end of the phone those nights when you were worried about certain things in your life and your work? And yes, you were. And was I not there, friend, whenever uh, your children were ill and, and I came to visit them? Was I not there whenever uh, you needed and I came and brought you gifts and goods and presents and so on? And he goes, yes, you were. Yes, you were. Of course you were. He says, well, why have you stopped speaking to me? He says, because you stopped doing it. Because you stopped doing it. You see, People look at that as a dead fly. They don't see the dead fly. They just see you. You just get what I mean? Here, one mistake, one sin, now one mistake. is like one dead fly to many people. 
Turn with me to Second Corinthians, please, chapter 2. Second Corinthians, chapter 2. And verse 15. Tell you what, let's go to verse 14. First Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 14. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. There's a sermon in itself. There's a sermon for you. There's a word for you. Thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, in them that are saved. Pardon me, I've in the next verse. This, the Savior, the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. Verse 15. For we are unto God a sweet savour of Christ. In them that are saved and in them that perish. Here Paul is saying, in Christ, he's, his savour is on us and we are living, we're perfected in Christ. Listen, you, you are perfect. I'm not perfect. No, not in yourself you're not, but you are perfected in Christ. Declared righteous. And he says in verse 16, To the one we are a savour of death unto death, and to another a savour of life unto life, and to is sufficient for these things. You can be a savour, brother. You can be a savour, sister. A savour now, not a saviour. A savour. To people, to death. Or you can be a saver on the life. You can come and you can speak, talk, act around people where you become a saver of death because of who is around you. You have taken it from them and you have carried it on. And the dead fly of it causes it to send forth a stinking saver. It's just death. You can speak negative and bitter and hard and angry about people, about things all the time. And it just causes death to come into your spirit. It's death. Or you can start speaking love and life and healing and blessing, encouragement to people. You know, you can do this even whenever you think they're going to get the glory and you're not. You can do it. You know, I think that you've got a, a, a real gift. That is, try and work with it. Not, I think you have a better gift than me. You sit in the seat and I can stay up here. I'm going to have to watch my wife this weekend. Apparently she brought the word last Saturday night and it was a great, to the youth and it was a great word. And somebody said, you have to watch your wife or she's going to take over your spot. Look, it's all to do with a savour to life. And the more you're a savour to life, God turns all that anointing, anointing, the ointment in the life, and the perfume of it comes out, and he releases it to others. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. In Ephesians 5, this is the last... Uh, mention of this English word. Ephesians 5 and verse 2 says, And walk ye in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savour. Look, if you read on after that, it says about but fornication and uncleanness and, un- and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. You read on down there, Paul, this is, and this is what he says. He says, listen, don't give anyone any reason to say, look at him, if that's the way they are, and that's the way she is or he is. And I'm speaking about, I'm not talking about people who speak falsely of you, as Jesus said, for they condemn the Lord. I'm talking about giving them the reason because your lifestyle hasn't been what it should be. Paul says that Christ has sacrificed and love for us as a sweet-smelling savour unto his Father. So guess what? When you and I are saved, we step into that. And you and I, as I could call it, warts and all, 
Do you know Cromwell saying when they were painting him? They wanted to take off his warts when they were doing the painting. And he says, paint me warts and all. And when God looks at his warts and all, you know, he sees that complete picture, but he sees us through Jesus. You know what he sees? He sees perfection. Do you know what he smells? Sweet anointing. In your worship. I'm going to close here. We can be our own worst enemy. The apothecary is, as I said, it's made up. And, and sometimes we seek God for blessing. And God starts to use us. And God starts to bless us. And this is important. Because I'm speaking from, about all of us. And me too. God starts to use us. God starts to bless us. And the anointing starts to flow. And if you want the, 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 the savor of it. The, the, the aroma of it. The perfume of it. It's like the woman who comes and breaks the spike nard over Jesus' head. Fills the room. And our service for him starts to really increase. Do you know what happens? It could be in preaching, it could be in testifying, witnessing, it could be in the prayer meeting, and it happens when you're up there seeking God, and in our prayer meetings, there's someone coming down here, and when you're praying, you can see a development in your prayer life. You see them even praying, you can sense that they've been with God, they've taken note of that, that they've been with Jesus. And in that, the, this anointing is starting to grow in them, but you know what happens? We seek Him for so long, and once He's blessing us and turns it on, you and I can't handle it. I'll tell you what happens. Dead flies come. And they rest in it. And there's that one, and there's, well, there's this one, and there's him, and, and there's her, and there's that happened, and this thing here, and another one over there, and instead of worshiping him and keeping it sweet, keeping it good, you start bringing in the flies, and you can't see anything. Butterflies graveyard. The anointing stinks. You know what happens? You end up that which you had sought God for and wanted for so long. It seems to have gone. And you fall away. People fall away. Oh, and they're disappointed in God. I can tell you something, friend. Brother, sister, there is no disappointments in God. Do you see when you and I are not conscious of God? Do you know who moved? It's not God. You and I. He can't move. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. The anointing that you've received of him abideth in you. you see. But you've moved. It's not God, it's you. So what do we do? Seek him, and when God starts to bring you on again, you just keep your eyes on him and stop looking around at everything else. Amen. Say, Lord, we're following you. Dead flies cause it to stink. Look, Paul says, and I finish with this, in Philippians, I'll just flick over to it. In the book of Philippians, Chapter 3. Paul gives a, a, a whole line of his ecclesiastical upbringing and his teaching and his lineage and everything right down to the very tribe he came from, Benjamin. That's okay, that's good, that's all right. But look at what he says in verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung. Do count them but dung. That I may win Christ. See whatever is from your past life. Let it go. Let it go. Whatever it is. 
it could be, then you really need to give a, 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 a whole list. Let it go. Because dead flies are on that dung. And if dead flies are on the dung, you know what happens? It gets on their feet. And see when it gets on their feet, it gets into your life. The devil's dungy feet are all over many Christians' lives by little flies. You know, the things that we think don't really matter. But rather say, I have little, I have not a lot. This big aquarium of the church that I am, I'm just a little fish. Well, you know what? Small fish in the hands of Jesus fed a multitude. Fed a multitude. And the little that you have in the hands of Christ can feed others. You know why? Because the perfume, the anointing will be released in your life for his glory. For his glory. Amen. God bless us all this morning.